Hi, I'm Ethan. I love muzzleloading. Today we're continuing on our Invest Arms Gammer Hawken build. Full disclosure, I want to say muzzleloaders.com did give me a discount on the kit that we're using in this video, but that is not by any means affecting my commentary about the kit. Now it's time for kind of the moment of truth for this process. My stock is nice and dry after applying those two coats of Danish oil. You can see how much the color changed just with that clear natural finish danish oil it really just accents what's already there in the wood that you're using so we have a nice kind of medium darkness walnut stock here after applying that oil you can make it darker if you'd like with a stronger stain or oil or if you're even going for a black stock you can hit walnut with an aqua fortis solution or an iron nitrate solution and go through that and it'll make it a pretty dark colored rifle uh, because the original Hawkins that we're looking at in Bob Woodfield's book here, you can see there that Gemmer Hawkins is pretty light, much lighter than what we have going on here. But um, I'm going to not apply anything darker to this at this point. What I've done now is I've applied our same coats of oil in here into the barrel channel so that we can actually test this ink application process before we go onto the exterior of the stock. Like I said, we're following the notes from Mitch Yates on the striping that he applied to a Lehman style trade rifle recreation that he did. Uh, I'm a little nervous. I, I absolutely trust Mitch. And I, if this doesn't work, it's by all, no means the fault of his notes here. But uh, we're gonna test out some ink striping inside our barrel channel where it's not visible. That way, if this doesn't work or if we need to ask some folks for help, we don't have to go through and remove oil and, and sand back our stock. Um, I will say the stock feels pretty full, pretty saturated from that oil. So I'm hoping that this ink doesn't run very much. Now, because I like to draw and paint kind of in my free time, I have some ink here with me. This is some Noodler's ink that I've had for a little while now. That's an American company that makes some fountain pens and things. Um, their ink has been fun for me to use uh, and I encourage you to check them out if you're interested in pen and ink drawing, not sponsored or anything. That's just what I'm using here. So I have some black ink and I have some brown ink. I wanna get a look at what each of these look like on the stock and maybe mix these a little bit and blend them a little bit for these stripes so that we have a, a more of a natural multicolored look to the fake striping that we're adding to this. You can get some calligraphy ink. Uh, I recommend that you get some kind of waterproof ink if you can. It's gonna be a little bit more durable for you, uh, especially with a muzzle loader stock. We are gonna seal this after we apply the ink stripes, but we want uh, kind of a solid, strong ink for this. They usually come in small bottles, about half the size of the bottles that you see me showing you here. So it's not too expensive if you want to try something like this out. And then I'm testing three different styles of brushes here. Um, I've got a number three sable, I've got a number six round, and I've got a number three round. These are watercolor brushes. I use them a lot for pen and ink uh, illustrations and things. So this is what we're gonna be trying. Now, when you're looking at original pieces that have been faux striped like this, it's important not to get too perfectionist when you're trying to do something like this. I'm gonna try my best to make this look nice, but the originals that I've seen that had the faux striping on there were pretty rough, especially I think in comparison to today's standards of muzzleloader build quality and, and the artistry behind it. There were mismatched lines and blotches and, and lines that didn't connect as they went around the axis of the stock. So don't be too hard on yourself if it's not perfect. I know I'm not going to be because this is kind of a, a kind of a buck wild thing to be trying, but we're gonna give it our best shot. I'm seated at the bench here now, and just like with our metal finish and our oil that we use, I'm putting my ink into its own independent container. I can rinse these caps out later. Um, and I'm gonna put these now open ink bottles, which in hindsight wasn't a great idea, away from any place that the cat can get them. <laughs> uh, like I said, I'm seated for kind of maximum focus here and stability. And I'm just setting the stock up like this. If you have a, a vise of some kind that you can grab either end with to easily rotate, this might be the time for you to get something like that out. Um, but we're just gonna kind of try to do this by hand here. And I'm starting with my brown ink and my number six brush. 
brush is very thirsty. Okay, that number six doesn't look too bad, really. Um, the ink is setting on top of that oil a little bit, but I can see that it is going through with time, so I think we just need to be patient. And you can see are a few of the lines that I've put on and tested. This is a spot with quite a bit of oil in the wood, and you can see the ink taking a little bit. It's kind of sitting on top there, which has me a little nervous. Back in here, we don't have... What are you doing? Get down from there. Thank you. Back here, we have a spot that didn't get a whole lot of oil. Uh, and we can see there that the ink is soaking nicely into the wood. And it's not bleeding as much as I thought it would. I was a little afraid of it bleeding. Um, but now I'm a little nervous that I applied too much oil uh, to the stock and uh, we might have some issues with it setting. So I'm going to let this dry and then probably scrub the oiled exterior of the stock a bit more with our Scotch-Brite and get back to that wood a little bit so our ink has some more space to get in there. I'm also going to rinse out these other two brushes here. I'm going to stick with this number six round. This is a silver black velvet synthetic brush. Uh, for those of you wondering, uh, I like its line weight. It's a nice short bristle, which means I have some control over it as we apply this stuff. After letting this set and dry and scrubbing it back a little bit more, you can probably see that there's some dust on here. I'm not worried about that. We're going to apply some more oil to this later. Even the sections on the heavily oiled, not scrubbed sections of oil here are, are pretty dry and the ink is solidified. So we're going to move forward now on the assumption that this is going to work. <laughs> uh, this is a, kind of a, a test at your own risk kind of thing for your kit. Um, but we're going to kind of move forward here. My goal is to try to make continual lines all the way around if I can, or at least mesh them a little bit closer than some of the originals that I've seen. I've kind of mixed some of my black and brown ink here that I'm going to be pulling from. So my goal is to kind of start out here at the nose. You can see I've already broken my, my stroke there. And what I can do, kind of a watercolor trick, is after that line is established, I can go back in and drop a little bit of ink down in there. Okay, there's two lines. Thinking they might be a little small, but we're going to keep rolling with it and see how we go. I'm double checking here on my phone to make sure that I'm going in the right axis and it looks like we are. So there's the, there's the one that Mitch Yates was doing. So we're going to keep on with this process here. And what I'm going to do is flip this up. We'll take these to the other side. You might have an easier time if you rotate the stock like this rather than trying to drive your fingers or your hands. Let's see if we can get a stripe in there. Right out there at the front, why not? And I'm going to pay attention here to the top of my barrel channel. Try to continue that line up over it. Now when Mitch did this, he took about a one inch brush And he cut four brushes out of it so that he he made four lines at a time 
I think that's a probably a pretty good idea. I'm just a sucker for these brushes that I've got. So you see there I'm picking up a little black ink and then picking up a little brown ink. Kind of get that mixture in my brush. think as I'm doing this it's a little bit easier to just do the one side a few lines and then switch because you can just rotate the stock and rotate it back and you don't have to change positions now I'm getting a little angled there I'm going to come in and try to correct. Like that. Now I can't say myself if the Hawkins were faux striped like this. I think it was more of a trade rifle, kind of Lehman style rifle. So this isn't necessarily correct. But it's something I've wanted to try for a while, kind of being an artist. And a production kit like this, I think, offers a good opportunity to play with that. Especially as a hobbyist. So I'm going to come back and just tap a little bit across the top of the barrel channel there. I'm going to go through and do up to here to the end of our entry pipe on this side. I'll let it dry. And I'll flip it over and we'll go over to the other side. So far I'm incredibly impressed that this hasn't been bleeding. I was thinking about that even this morning as I knew I was going to be able to come down here and work on this. I was so nervous that this was just going to run. And if you want to change it up some, you know, come out there to the edge of where you're working. And drop a line in there. As you can see, as we come across here, the, the color of the line changes as our brush empties, as we're making those marks. And if you don't want that to be too uniform, you can change that up. So I'll just come right out here into the middle. Put a line right there. And then maybe the middle here. You can do something like that and get that variation to look a little bit more natural. So now our, our kind of empty brush strokes are, are spaced out a little bit. Then I can come back in. That's kind of a watercolor trick, but as that ink is still wet in those spots, I can just dab a little bit of darker ink. And it's going to be a little segmented uh, in color, but you know, it's, it's kind of comes down to your preference. Okay. There we go, folks. There's four or five inches of our lines. Whoo doggy! That's nerve-wracking, but it's working. Very pleased, very pleased. There you can see the kind of the fore end area of either side. I went through and striped both sides and let them dry. I hit it a little bit with a heat gun, but it looks like I started to pull some of the oil up out of the stock, so I kind of stopped that for a little bit. Uh, thankfully, it's a nice dry day, so I can set this in the sun if I want to accelerate this drying. Um, 
I can smudge it a little bit with my fingers, but as long as I'm careful, I think we can continue forward here. We're getting into kind of a tricky area now where we have to come around as evenly as we can on the underside of our stock. Don't expect this to be perfect. Like I said, I don't expect this to be perfect. Well, I gotta move that because the cat will be up here pretty quick. I don't expect this to be perfect as we come across this bottom face here. The original Lehman's and the original faux striped pieces that I've seen have a lot of mismatched lines there. So we're gonna do our best, but not get caught up. I think at this point, perfect is the enemy of good. And uh, we wanna do a good job, but not uh, get to the point where we get frustrated and scrap this at this point. So I found that it's a little bit easier to get a nice even line. I'm gonna shift my workspace here just a little bit. If I rotate the stock with my off hand, rather than try to rotate the, the hand that's holding the brush. So I make contact and I start rotating with my left hand. Ooh, you see there we got a little got a little off. That's okay. And then I'll come up here to the top and just dab on either side to make sure that we have good coverage along the top here. I think that's a nice little detail for us to have where we have the lines coming up to the barrel channel. Bring you in a little closer here for this next one. After a little bit of a time warp there, I'm happy to show you the completed faux striping on our Invest Arms Gammer Hawken kit. I spent uh, just some time away from the camera, really in between changing diapers, uh, putting stripes on about four or six inches at a time and then letting it set and dry. I will say that it takes these lines a long time to dry and to solidify into the stock and into the oil on the stock. I'm running at about 36 hours right now before the ink is fully dry and I can pick it up and handle it without anything smudging on my fingers. I found that it helped to set the stock into an open window on a sunny day so it could catch both some fresh air breeze across the surface as well as some of that powerful warm early summer sun to help everything cure. Now I know you're gonna have some questions about the durability of these ink lines on this stock. And as I was leaving the stock in a window, uh, we got a little bit of rain and some rain splashed in the screen and, and ended up getting on the stock a little bit. Should have closed the window, wasn't really thinking very much, but I was super terrified. I set the stock in a room with a fan on it and let it dry out and it's fine. None of the stripes bled or, or got runny or anything. Everything is nice and solid. Now the sections of the stock, really the, the lock mortise forward that have dried, they've dried kind of a nice variation. They're not all fully black or fully brown. There's some natural color shift in there, which is what I was going for. Uh, those parts are really securely on there. I can rub them with my hand and, and really it's solid. Now. What I'm gonna do next is we're gonna apply a little bit of bone black to the stock. And with that application of bone black, we're gonna be following Kibler's directions. Now to apply that bone black, we're gonna follow Kibler's directions where we're using a dry brush technique to apply that to our stock. And that's gonna give us a little bit of oil on the stock. And after that has dried, we'll go through and apply a full coat of oil to really seal all of this in. I'm going to do that though after the bone black. After the bone black, we're gonna 
fit and apply all of our parts so that our last few coats of oil are applied with all of the hardware inlet into the stock and solidified with all the screws and things so that as that wood swells, it's gripping all of our inleted pieces and we don't have to go back through and adjust anything. Um, I've had quite a few comments on Instagram about the progress of this faux striping. I'm really pleased with it and a lot of you seem to be as well. I've even had some people say that it looks a little too natural. Um, so while I appreciate the compliment, you know, maybe we can go for a little bit of a rougher look next time.